developmental anomalies with particular reference to behavior and cognitive development have come to the forefront now in clinical practice. 30 years ago, these issues were picked up in, by the practicing pediatrician only when the child came to his office for some other ailment. But now things have changed because a lot of awareness has been created in the population and community. There's increased parental literacy and there are more neurodevelopmental centers available to detect all these issues and more neurodevelopmental protocols are available to be implemented. Above all, under the Mudalamacha Kapiti Thittam, that is Chief Minister's insurance scheme, these special children get financial benefits. What I propose to do is, uh, it's a difficult thing, but what I propose to do now is, at random I picked up some clinical situations which are probably predisposed to this behavior and cognitive disturbances. And uh, it won't be out of place for me to inform you that a pediatric healthcare delivery has tremendously improved all over the country, both neonatal and uh, pediatric services, especially with reference to two states, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, in almost all the 38 districts, we have very good essential newborn care, that's level one. Level two care is also available in many of the districts and many of the districts who have medical colleges, you may be knowing there are 26 government medical colleges in Tamil Nadu and all of them provide very good, excellent services level three. To make a passing mention, our Dean MMC was heading the unit at uh, Government Medical College in Vellore, and he was doing a tremendous work in the unit. However, his able administratorship pulled him away from the clinical medicine and he became the Dean of MMC. So, so what was lost to clinical medicine was a gain to our alma mater MMC. Uh, neurodevelopment uh, assessment has become a part, integral part of pediatric care now. So with reference to this, I picked up a few situations in clinical practice which will lead on to behavior disturbances and cognitive maldevelopment. Yeah, behavior disorders involve a pattern of dis disruptive behaviors in children that last for at least six months and cause problems in school, at home, and in so social situations. Development of uh, children's thinking, reasoning, and problem-solving skills. And this is what Amy is going to talk about and how she's going about assessing all these children. Now, coming to the predisposing factors which could develop behavior disturbances and or inadequate uh, cognitive development. First and foremost is hypoxia. Now, hypoxia can occur in the antenatal period. I'll just quote one example for each. The chronic hypoxia occurring in the antenatal period is common thing is pregnancy-induced hypertension, PIH, which causes chronic hypoxia, resulting in intrauterine growth retardation. Now, these are the risk babies who are potential candidates who can develop uh, disturbances to the above two issues. And coming to the intrapartum hypoxia, where hypoxia affects the fetus, uh, things like obstructed labor, prolonged labor, and uh, cephalopelvic disproportions, maternal medical illnesses, maternal obstetric issues, all contribute to hypoxia. And uh, the other issues concerning in the intrapartum period is uh, acute situations like premature separation of placenta, uh, or APH, antipartum hemorrhage, and cord compression, two knots of the cord, cord around the neck. So these are all the issues which can result in hypoxia and particle dysfunction later. So uh, soon after the birth, if a baby fails to initiate a breath on its own, it, we call it as asphyxia neonatorum, and this should be handled properly by trained personnel, no matter at what level, whether it's a primary health center, level one, level two, or level three. Nowadays in Tamil Nadu, even the primary health centers, the health personnel, health workers, anganwadi workers are trained to that extent of managing uh, simple cases of asphyxia neonatorum. Uh, for management of asphyxia neonatorum, one should be well versed with the N NRP protocol, neonatal resuscitation program protocol, and that should be taken. A word about prevention goes a long way in prevention of these problems with reference to behavior. Now, once 
the mother has a good antenatal checkup if all her medical conditions are addressed to properly if the obstetrical complications are handled competently and during the intrapartum phase if there is a very careful watchful expectancy and appropriate monitoring and intervention at the appropriate time definitely goes a long way in saving these neonates and then of course i already told you the moment the baby is born it should be handled by a proper person who has been trained to manage newborn babies uh, so basically hypoxia now coming to preterm here again the common denominator is hypoxia again now preterm what happens is these babies don't expand their lung the surface tension of the lungs is so high it come it collapses the lung so and during the antenatal period make sure whatever measure you can take to prolong the delivery as late as possible beyond at least beyond 34 weeks of gestation now after 34 weeks you will have good amount of surfactant which will reduce the surface tension and the babies will be in a better position to expand the lungs to prevent to prevent this rds that is surfactant deficiency in the antenatal period it is mandatory to administer steroids to the mother this helps the type 2 pneumocytes of the lungs to produce more surfactant reduce the surface tension baby's lungs expands baby breathes well without much of a problem so this is a remarkable uh, development that has happened in the last 15 years where we give steroids to the antenatal mother now what is rop rop is a retin retinopathy of prematurity arising out in arising out of uh, oxygen excessive usage or in preterm babies which is this is totally a condition which can be prevented by using less of oxygen and if it happens if it so happens the baby develops rop retinopathy of prematurity treatment is available and if you do not detect it at the early phase as early as four weeks to six weeks when all the retinas have to be screened the potential blindness can happen and this baby can go in for a lot of uh, disturbances so what is meaningful survival no there's no point in trying to make a baby who was born around 26 weeks with 600 grams and you take in put in all your efforts for two months or three months and make the baby survive and baby goes home and you add a feather to your cap but you must have a meaningful discussion with the parents and the family before attempting to make this baby survive because the small babies 500 grams or 600 grams are a potential candidates for lot of cortical dysfunction later so this is what is called meaningful survival so i have already talked to you about certain preventive factors why i once again stress antenatal administration of steroids is very very helpful now here are a few situations hypoglycemia uh, should never allow a baby to lapse into hypoglycemic status blood sugar level in a newborn baby less than 40 mg percent or in a older child 60 mg percent can result in uh, cortical cells are so sensitive in the neonatal period it can upset the metabolism and derange the cortical cells and potentially the babies can develop uh, cortical dysfunction sequelae hyperbilirubinemia is another clinical situation wherein if the bilirubin levels go beyond the acceptable levels we have norms for different gestation for different age of the baby so if they cross beyond their levels these babies are prone to get what is known as bilirubin encephalopathy or kernicterus you know this situation results in again hits the cortical system as well as the extra peripheral system more importantly it affects the hearing and babies go get into sensorineural hearing loss thyroidism hypothyroidism is one situation we we'll have to detect it at birth because once you detect it screen it and to the thyroid profile later once you detect it and screen it and start treating it the baby definitely can have a normal outcome otherwise there will be sub sub mental pro problems are expected sepsis is one of the known killers in any in any unit encephalitis meningitis sequelae can cause problems chromosomal anomalies the trisomy syndromes like down syndrome congenital malformations one of the congenital malformations which is very common is they pick up lot of congenital deafness and uh, in tamil nadu uh, i'm proud to say that tamil nadu has come out of, with a big scheme to help these uh, children to undergo uh, cochlear implant free of cost for such of those who are below the poverty line 
Now, obesity is one of the growing problems in India too. And we face a lot of uh, problems with obesity, especially these children are subject to uh, problems regarding the social and uh, mixing with the other students in the school. Child neglect, uh, child neglect, I would make a passing mention. I would suggest many times now, in about 30 years ago, the number of working parents in the OP was only about 25%. Now the working person, working parents percentage has gone up to 85, 90%. So the mother and the father do not have much of time. Please no neglect your child. Full tender loving care must be provided for all the children. A child abuse basically, uh, I put it up because of uh, basically it's a sexual abuse. Unfortunately, it's happening in India in school girls. Very recently also in last week, there was an abuse of a school girl by a teacher and it ended up in a catastrophe. So the girls are prone for depression and that has to be addressed too. School phobia, school phobia can occur in children wherever there's a disturbance in the ambience. Either ambience is not all right at home or the ambience is not all right in the school. Both have to be uh, in, uh, taken into consideration and addressed too. Now, what is this uh, pandemic sequelae? In the last six months, we have found uh, children coming with irritability, hyperactivity, uh, being adamant, abusive, aggressive, uh, sometimes violent, impulsive, and in inappropriate social uh, reactions. So all this have been attributed to the children who remained indoors for nearly one and a half years. They never went to school. They never had to play games with anybody. And parents are, even some of the parents were afraid to take the bad child even to the balcony. So much so what has happened is another issue is that is cropped up is rickets have come into the poor. So that is pandemic sequelae. Now coming to the adolescent issues, see what you will see that for most of the children up to 10, 12 years of age, uh, they are well protected. Some of them are overprotected. Some of them are pampered. But however, after 10 to 12 years, when they come out into the society, you know, that secure feeling which they had at home is all lost. A feeling of insecurity creeps into them and this drives them away from the track and they take a tangential course. Many of them, not all of them, many of them take a tangential course. So what do they do? They experiment with sex, they experiment with drugs, they tend to form gangster, they change friendship partners, and the, the killer factor in this uh, group is a mobile data. I repeat, the killer factor is the mobile data, which takes them around the world on a merry-go-round and get, gets them into fantasies. Unfortunately, the world can't do anything about it. But we have had any number of children addic getting addicted to the mobile data for four to six hours per day. Coming to the curricular stress, here again, it can depress a student. One of the leading institutions in the city of Chennai, uh, every year, because of the curriculum stress, there's a depression and there's a catastrophe occurring due to suicide. So in that particular center, a uh, support system has been arranged and such of the students who are depressed can approach the center for further help. Now, why am I talking about breastfeeding and KMC? Now, breastfeeding, two aspects. Now, we always preach and propagate breastfeeding in the exclusive breastfeeding, nothing but exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of life. Now, I brought it up here because two important aspects. Breastfeeding establishes a very strong bondage between the mother and child, which goes a long way in good neurodevelopmental process. The other aspect of breastfeeding is whenever a mother is feeding a baby, newborn baby, and if there's an elder child, three-year-old or two-year-old, this child gets into disturbances of behavior, becomes cranky. So how do you overcome it? So I, we always advise the mother to keep the elder child next to her or on her lap when she is breastfeeding the baby. And not only that, assign responsibilities to the elder child so that the baby becomes part of, the elder child realizes it's part of his own responsibility to look after the newborn. Now what is KMC? Certainly, certainly not Kilpak Medical College. Kangaroo mother care. Now, kangaroo mother care is a procedure wherein the baby bear chest to the baby 
is put onto the bare chest to the mother between the breasts and the mother is wrapped up. Now, in what way does it is facilitate for better neuro, neuro development? This establishes again skin to skin contact and provides a mother and baby bondage is better. It's also believed the uh, temperature maintenance is good and it's a warmth feeling that the mother gives to the baby. Two phrases which have been deleted from the dictionary of pediatrics is, I don't even want to mention, is mental retardation and deformed child. How do you address them? Special child and differently able child. Thank you. But thank you is never my last slide in any of my deliberations because for any clinical pediatrician or a physician to have a good successful outcome in hospital clinical practice, you need the team support. Now, in pediatrics and neonatology, the team support, the main person is the nurses. The nurses form the pillars of the unit. They are the backbone of the unit. Without them, you are, the unit is spineless. They are committed person, they're compassionate, they're challenge accepting, and they are commendable. We always respect them, regard them. Many times we salute them. Now, thank you very much. Thank